the Book Baron. Welcome in. So today we are doing the long awaited but not at all anticipated tour of all of my special editions. Yes, I have grabbed all of my special editions from all the random places in my house, bookshelf back there, a small bookshelf downstairs, random windowsills by next to my bed, under my bed, they're from a little bit of everywhere. But I wanted to do like a separate dedicated video because genuinely I think that special editions are way overblown at this point. Prices are absolutely out of control. So I do not want to influence anybody to go out and purchase these, especially because the secondhand market is an absolute racket. But um, I did want to talk about them because a lot of these are like all time favorite books or hold some really dear memories to me or I really love the authors. So I just wanted to be able to talk about the book, talk about what the special edition includes and because I am feeling extra snarky because it's 90 degrees in September for some reason in Seattle. And also this is the second time that I have attempted to film this video and it hasn't gone well either time. I'm feeling a little bit snarky. So I will let you know whether or not I'd repurchase it or as well or if I have any cons related to that type of special edition or just the price point per the book because there are some book boxes I will not be repurchasing from and that's that but before I get started I'm gonna put my hair up because your girl's sweaty now that my hair's up I feel a little bit better but I'm not gonna go in any particular order all of my books are just kind of like spread out around here I'll try and group them if I remember my book box but we'll see um and the first ones that I'm seeing right here are actually some of the first are these the first some of the first special editions that I ever purchased so this was part of a dark and quirky book box like way back when so I think either both of these or at least Heartless the Elsie Silver series I know has been fully produced in special edition covers that all match now I can't remember if they've done that for Candy Steiner or not I don't think so but anyways regardless this this came in a box together the price point it was about $30 a book roughly and these were some of the very first special editions that I ever purchased I didn't realize that you could purchase special editions as like a one-off prior to this book box for whatever reason I thought all of them were subscription based and these were two of my favorites that year so we have as I kind of alluded to Blindside by Candy Steiner I just love this cover model normally I'm not a super big on like people on my covers but just because I kind of feel like the way that people feel about like flower covers is kind of how I feel about a lot of people covers they feel like a cop-out they feel lazy to me a lot of times but these are gorgeous and and added bonus they actually look like what I think the characters look like in my head. That's another reason I don't like people covers. I don't like being told what the characters should look like. That's also why I don't like character art. That's a that's a whole different thing. These are these are five star reads for me. I absolutely love these. They'll say there's like no sprayed edges on these. Um, I think there's like a little bit of formatting at the chapter headers. But other than that, it's just a nice new cover um, that I just really happen to like. So these are ones that I would absolutely repurchase. Next up is kind of a random one off. And this is The Madhouse by Liza James. This was done by how to get the girl, how you get the girl, something like that. But this is a book box that only features sapphic romances. If you've watched my channel at any point last year, I'm absolutely obsessed with Madhouse. It is one of my favorite books. It's about two heroines that escape a cult at different points in their life, their stepsisters, and they have to come to terms with the fact that they want to know each other biblically. This is the very first book that they ever produced. I wanted to support Liza, and I also wanted to support a book box that only features sapphic romances, and a lot of them are pretty underrated. However, this is not my favorite special edition. I probably wouldn't repurchase this. For the price point, it's decent. I think this one was another one that was around about $30. There's a little bit of formatting on the chapters, but other than that, it's nothing that I'm too excited about because I'm not super big on cartoon covers for one. Also, I just don't like the shiny cover. And also there's a little bit of blurriness. Now, as I said, this was their first ever book. So they might have come a long way since then. So this is one that I would pass on and I probably wouldn't repurchase. All right, next up. And this is from, I believe, Hello Lovely. I think this is the only one I have from Hello Lovely, but it's Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. This was the first ever Gianna Darling book that I ever read. It was the first time that I really remember liking Age Gap. Prior to that, I'd kind of found it a little bit like, eh. I was excited to get a copy of this. I just think it's like really 
cool. I love how it's like that single color scale. Um, no sprayed edges on this one. I did get an oopsie copy. So I think this one is, yeah, this one is signed, but the chapter headers are messed up. So I got this for like $5. So because I'm a cheap bitch, I would absolutely repurchase this one. I think I honestly paid more in shipping than I did for the book itself. So I don't own any other books from that series and I haven't read any other books from that series. So that is that one. And I, I don't think I have any others from Hello Lovely, but I do have one. I think this is their sister book box. Maybe I'm making that up. I can't remember. From the Bell book box, I have The Black Swan Affair by A.L. Krieg. So this is a love triangle with two brothers involved. And I did read this one. It's not my like most favorite of all time. I honestly purchased it because I thought the cover was really stunning. I'm not as big of a fan of the sprayed edges. I don't know. There's something about this shade of turquoise that just screams a little cheap to me or dated. It just feels a little bit off. I'm not super in love with the sprayed edges. Personally, it's like feathers. It is hand signed, which is nice, but I did purchase this second hand. I did not purchase it directly from the book box and I got a pretty killer deal on it. Would I repurchase it though? even with that deal, not necessarily, only because it's not a most favorite, but it is a gorgeous cover. I really do like that. Next up, I have one that I'm not really sure how to talk about, but we're gonna throw it in here. And that's Manacled by Sendling Nude. So I got this from a book binder. And while I would love to spread the love and joy and cheer to all of you, this person does not bind books anymore because people kept stealing their cover art. So that's really sad. Um, I was gonna try and get a copy for a friend, but Alas, and also it's kind of tricky because like you have to find someone that's like not making a profit. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are these days. So hi, hi, hi. So I just wanted to pop on and clarify something really fast. For anyone who isn't aware, you're not supposed to make money off of fan fiction. Now, um, I am not a lawyer. I'm just some dumb bitch in her house. But I think with bookbinding, it's a little bit of a gray area. But my understanding is that you're not supposed to charge for anything more than the materials and like the time to actually bind it. But you're not like allowed to charge any extra because then you would be profiting from the fan fiction. Hopefully that makes sense but like that's why I'm like be leery because the one's on Etsy. <laughs> Suspish. Okay that's all I had to say. Bye bye. There's like no interior formatting but just having a bound copy of this book that I really enjoyed so much. I had such an experience with it. I binged it over the course of a three day weekend, I think. It just like, it looks so sophisticated. Uh, this is definitely one that I would repurchase though, if it was a possibility, because I really, I really do like this one. This is another people cover that I like. Actually, can you kind of see? It's like the art on the cover is really cool. Next up, we have another one off, and this is a probably smut edition of Dark City Omega by Elizabeth Stevens. So this is the first book in the Beast of Gatamora series that she's currently coming out with. Oh my God, I'm sweating so bad. It's an MF Omega verse. That's like a dystopian kind of sci-fi-ish kind of fantasy feeling. This is a black page edition. I got this second hand for very inexpensive. There was someone in my area that was selling it. So I didn't even have to pay for shipping. So I would repurchase it. Absolutely. Because I'm a cheap hoe and I really enjoyed this book. It'll, I don't know if it'll make the top 10 for this year, but it would be an honorable mention. I really, really did like this book. Next up is one that I genuinely do not know <laughs> if this was like a signing special edition or where this came from. I don't know why, but, but I'm not finding any marking for like what the book box would have been. So if you know, excellent. Okay, good news folks. In an attempt to be more professional than I usually am, I did look at the listing that I purchased this from and it's from cover to cover. And now you know, you're welcome. Okay, bye. Um, but it's Vibe by Liza James. I actually have two special editions of this. I purchased this one, once again, a very inexpensive amount. Someone was reselling it and I really love Liza James. So I decided to snap up a copy. This is another sapphic romance. It's dark. It's another gal escaping a cult. So mm, we're sensing a pattern. She likes cults. Um, <laughs> well, I don't like cults. I like books about people escaping cults. I digress. One thing that I completely forgot to mention, but I feel you have a right to know, is that there is a little bit of blurriness on the back of the cover with like the text and stuff. So just a heads up with that, that's like a thing that I noticed. Basically what I'm trying to say is the graphics are a little bit blurry. Now you know. Th that's all I have now. Okay, bye. Um, yeah, so uh, because it was so inexpensive and I really love this book, I would absolutely repurchase this one. Hi, so uh, sorry to do another freeze frame, but I did want to clarify every time that I say that it was like really inexpensive, I mean that I bought it for about the same price as like the regular edition would have been.
So like think under $20. Okay, that's all I've got. Next up I have Wanderlust by Sky Warren. This was by Dark Hearts Romance. So my husband actually per purchased this for me. So I actually don't know how much it was. I really love this cover. I didn't love the book as much, but he purchased it for me because I love Captor Captive. He saw that this would be a cover that I like because of the pine trees. It does have some like nice formatting here. That was very sweet of him. But um, this is one that I would potentially down the line maybe resell only because it's not the most favorite and it's not the most special of special editions but because she's quite thin and fits nicely on my shelf I don't have it on the chopping block at this point. Next up is Captured by Lauren Beal. So this is kind of a different special edition because this was purchased on the author's Etsy site. She produces these herself which I think is really cool and I think she's got white page, black page, and purple page editions. Sometimes they sell out, but I was able to get an oopsie copy. So the top of it is like white because they kind of got cut wrong, but I adore this edition. I did not think I was going to get a copy. I accidentally purchased a different book off of her Etsy and I was devastated when I opened the package. Book Vibes with Lynette helped me find out about this oopsie copy, which was super sweet of her. I absolutely, I love a dark page special edition. This has really beautiful chapter headers. This is a book that I really, really jived with. It is pitch black. It's definitely one of the darkest, most twisted books I've ever read. It reads more like a horror on some level, but the Stockholm Syndrome is so good in this. This is one I would repurchase because of that, again, it's at a discount because this one happened to be an oopsie. But also I was clearly ready to pay full price for this bad boy. I love a dark page special edition and I really love this cover. I don't know, something about the purple flowers. I just like them. Okay, that's all, bye. I think it's well done and all the money's going to the author. So like definitely check her um, her Etsy shop out if you wanna purchase any of her eBooks. Like she's got so much stuff on there. Next up is The Trail of Sins. This is a complete omnibus. So this is absolutely one of my favorite special editions that I own. Have I read this series? No, this is by Beyond the Pages. So I purchased this secondhand. Someone sold this at a steep discount at a steep discount. For transparency's sake, I think I paid about like 40, 50 bucks for this, which I think is an absolute fucking steal for this thing. Anyway, let's get back to it. This was part of a bigger box and I think they busted it up, but I wanted to collect all of Pam's work. So I really love this because I have a room upstairs that's got all of my like Texas gear, which is like all of my longhorns, horseshoes, cowboy hats. I don't think my cowboy boots are up there, but like it's got all of my yeehaw-ness in there. And uh, yeah, this is, I just love this edition because it just kind of sits nicely up there. So I think the books are like, uh, it's like booted, buckled, knotted, I think are the three books or something like that. Um, and they are dark cowboy romances. So I haven't gotten to those yet, but I absolutely will because I love this special edition and I'm sure I'll love it even more once I actually get to read it. But I got to show you, look at how gorgeous these chapter headers are. They're in full color, they're glossy, they just feel nice on the hands. Like, I love this special edition. No sprayed edges or anything, but I just, I think it's stunning. All right, while we're talking about Pam, I will confess that I have another copy of one of the books, which is Knotted by Pam Godwin. So I thought I was gonna collect these until I found that other special edition of the bind up. Initially passed on it, but once again, I got a really killer deal secondhand. Um, so I was like, oh, maybe I will collect these after all, after passing on it initially. I'm a very plain type of gal and this copy is just like, it's beautiful, but it's also like a little bit too busy for me. Oh, should I tell you who it's from? This is from Fabled Nights fabled book box. So like I said, it's not my most favorite. I just don't think this dust jacket is anything too, too special. It's nice, but it's not my favorite, especially compared to that other special edition. So this is one that I wouldn't necessarily repurchase. You know, I didn't really end up collecting the rest. So um, this is one that I'll probably resell at some point. Since we're talking about Miss Pamela Godwin, um, I will show you a couple of editions of Dark Notes. So this one is from Bright Side Candles. I really just think this cover is beautiful. I refused to buy any of the covers that have a white woman on the cover because the character is black. I don't get it. I don't get why you keep putting white cover models on a story about a black woman. It's just... anyways. I digress. So this is a hardcover edition. Um, same with the last one. It's got kind of like music notes sprayed on the edges. Um, this yellow color isn't my personal favorite, but I really do. It's this like soft matte and then it has this like gorgeous foiled detailing. Um, so I really love the cover, but I will admit the inside is like Times New Roman, kind of cut wonky, not my favorite. And for the price, I bought this in a scratch and dent sale. And even 
at the scratch and dent prices. I think this was like $75 or something absolutely heinous. I don't think I would repurchase this one, even though I really love this cover. There's not enough else about it that's special to make me feel like $75 was really worth it. I don't know if it's just because I bought it as a single versus like when it was bundled in like a book box, which I am assuming came with like candles and other books and uh, maybe the price point was lower, but for a scratch and dent, mm, I don't think I'd repurchase it. So I have another special edition of Dark Notes and this one I would repurchase. The price point on this, I, it's still in the foiling. So sorry, it's gonna be kind of hard to look at, but this is, this black part is matte and then there's like silver foiling here got a piano sprayed. Like this is just like a little bit more classic looking and the price point was at about $40. And this was from the Books for Days crate or Books for Days box or something like that. Um, so I purchased this one very shortly after I purchased that other one because I didn't have it in my possession and completely forgot that I purchased it. So that's classic. Like I said, I prefer the editions that do not have a person on the cover <laughs> because they keep putting white models on there, which I just find bizarre. Oh, how many of these freaking voiceovers am I gonna have to do? I guess as many times as I fuck up. So once again, I have to interject. The flip side of this dust jacket, although I don't have it out of the packaging to show you, is character art that's like cartoonish. It's not my favorite style, but you know what it does get props for? The fact that the woman is actually black. It kind of feels weird to thank a book box for doing the bare minimum, but I am very appreciative of the fact that they chose to do that. Okay, bye. But I would repurchase this one. I think this one was closer to like $40. Um, so that to me is really reasonable, especially considering this is a, a hardback version. So um, I would repurchase this one. All right, next up, I have a couple books from Lily White by the, um, the Midnight Bookshelf. I have Target This, and then I have The Five. So these are two of her more like thriller-esque dark romances. I would say this one definitely leads more like erotic thriller. This one is a, has a little bit more romance. But they're both more thriller-ish, but I just thought that these covers were absolutely gorgeous. They took pieces from the book and just made them absolutely come to life. I love these covers. The interior isn't really anything to write home about. There's no like sprayed edges, but this is once again, I would repurchase these because I purchased these separately actually, secondhand, and I got them for way under what the person would have paid for. So because of that, I would absolutely repurchase these if I bought them full price. Probably not because these are both more like four, four and a half star books rather than five stars. All right, I'm gonna do a few more and then I'm gonna have to take a break because I am so wetty. I need to just like take a beat because I feel like I'm out of breath for some reason. But I have a couple of books from Last Chapter's bookshop. So The Blood We Crave by Monty J. So this is part of the Hollow Boy series and it's like billionaire Nepo babies. <laughs> That's not a good description. It's like these, this band of boys in college that are like rich but also kind of like from the wrong side of the tracks feel they're the bad boys and they're trying to get revenge for a um a murder that took place and it's also them all finding their loves it kind of gives like devil's night vibes um but this is the third book in the series this is another one that i own two copies of and that's because i purchased this one and then i got another one in my blackout romance book box subscription because of that I would not necessarily repurchase this copy. Also, it's not my most favorite book. I think I gave it about four stars. It's my least favorite book in the series. So the irony of me owning two copies of it, but I just don't feel like this edition is all that special and I would never have paid full price for this. I definitely got a deep, deep discount on this guy. Similarly, from The Last Chapter's bookshop, I have The Devil by Ashley Jade and The Devil's Advocate. So these are once again, softback, they've got no sprayed edges. There's like no interior formatting to speak of. So I'm really torn about whether or not I would repurchase this book because this book, well, this duet, I absolutely ate up. I had such a good time with this series. Definitely go in knowing nothing as much as you possibly can. But it's like one of those that you think you know where the story is going and then you get a whole other story and then you're like, I like this story even better than what I thought I was signing up for. But the actual covers are, I don't like them. I don't like them. The dude on the cover is so creepy. You cannot tell me that that's one of the characters. Absolutely not. I had been looking for special editions. It's pretty hard to find special editions of these books. And the last ones that were done were not good. And it was a while ago. So I ended up missing the first time that they were selling these. So I got these in 
an I think an overstock sale and I gotta be honest I think these are horrifically overpriced for what they are the design is nothing special and also not really anything to do with the book but at the same time I'd rather have these editions than the regular editions <sighs> So I don't know that I would actually repurchase these. I think part of me was just so excited to find a non man cover one that I was like, yay, especially because I was able to get them in the overstock sale. But I think I paid also $100 for these two books. And one of these is genuinely a novella. And that just feels like a, a price gouge. I'm just gonna be honest. And for special editions that are once again, not that special, they're soft cover, there's no interior formatting, like I think you could have done a little bit more. I'm gonna take a little bit of break. I'm pretty sweaty. I need to, and then we will get this shebang wrapped up. Sounds good, see you in a second. Hi, just a quick word of warning. My mic is gonna cut out for like five seconds and so the sound is gonna sound like shit and then the mic will kick back in. So sorry about that, but it's gonna make your ears bleed for like five seconds. Also, also, I look very sweaty and we're all going to ignore that. Okay, bye. And I'm back. So I finally stopped sweating, but we've got some weird lighting because it's later in the day. So we've got that weird reflection going on from, I think it's my neighbor's window. So the next one that I have is the Mind F series by S.T. Abbey. And this was done by the Mystic Box. Don't mind, I have a couple inserts that are just kind of tucked in the book, but this has some like really cool sprayed edges or these might be digitally printed. I think these are digitally printed also. The Naked Hardback is gorgeous. Love it, love it, love it. It has that kind of like somewhat modern, somewhat old timey kind of look to it. Got some cool end pages here. I will say with this one, although I would absolutely repurchase it because this has a lot of memories. I, it was like my first reading vlog I think I ever did. I was very, very sick while I was doing it, but it was my very first one. So it kind of holds like a special place in my heart. I really enjoyed the series, even though it's like absolutely just bonkers, batshit wild and not that good of a romance, but it is really fun. They did misprint a couple things. So there's some mistakes in this book. And um, the foiling it just kind of got, you can kind of see, it gets scratched up like really easily. Just like pulling it on and off the shelf a couple times has dinged it up. So that part I find a little bit annoying, but I'd still repurchase it because I really do just have like really fond and lovely memories of this book. And I don't, it, this is such a beautiful edition of it because like, let's be real, all the other covers are not good and make it seem like it's an erotica and it's not. So anyway, I think that's the only one that I have from Mystic Box. Oh, hi, Kevin. Kevin is now here. <laughs> This little raccoon tail. And if you hear a little like clicking sound, those are his little tiny tootsies clicking along the floor. Next up, I think I'm gonna save all of my blackout romance and dark and disturbed for last. Ooh, here's a good one. Okay, this one is from, I think it's called the Baddies Book Box. Book Box Baddies. Oh my God, I don't remember. I wanna get it right. Okay, this one is from the Baddies Book Box. And this one, I had never purchased from them before. This was a first time. I actually didn't really know that much about their book box or anything like that. I came across it more recently. Most of the rest of these I've like known about for some time, but they had a copy of God of Fury, which is MM books, but it gets deep dark into the emotions. And this was actually my first Rena Kent that I successfully read through all the way. And I just adore adored it in a way that was very unexpected for me. But I absolutely think this is probably one of the best special editions I have for the price point. I just don't see, foresee myself purchasing a lot more special editions. I'm just kind of burnt out on them. But if they have one of a book that I really like, I will absolutely purchase from them. I think their hardcover, like for a single copy is around like, trying to remember, I think it was around like $40, $45, which for a hardback is a really amazing price point. There's a lot of paperbacks that go for that price. It has really cool, but not overdone sprayed edges because I feel like <laughs> the sprayed edges on some of these books are getting just ridiculous. And that's become more of a focus than making a decent cover, which just kind of annoys me. But they're like really detailed. I'll try and get in here. They're really detailed, they're really well printed. There's good contrast, so it doesn't just look like muddy and blurry or just kind of like, you can tell what this is from a distance. It matches the cover nicely. There's not a disconnect in the colors here. It's got a reversible dust jacket, which this has this elegance to it. But on top of that, the naked hardback is gorgeous and stunning. And once again, sticks with this theme 
right? Like it's, it feels like this was all like really well thought out and all connected. It has a ribbon as a bookmark. The end pages are beautiful and in full color, just absolutely stunning. And then there's interior formatting as well. Like I think this is for the price point, you really just cannot beat it with what they're putting out. I I was so absolutely blown away. Like this was one of those special editions. I don't know if you guys have ever had that experience where you order it and then you get it and you're like, oh cool. And then you put it on your shelf. When I got this one in the mail, I was like, oh my gosh. Like everything about it was just like really well thought out. So this is genuinely one of my favorites. I keep gushing about it. This isn't even like an all time favorite book. This was just like one of the my favorite MMs at the time. All right, next up. What should we do next? Okay, let's do a recent book box that I got. Okay, next up is the um, Pride book box from Twisted Fiction, which I just got, so it's all still in the cellophane. It also doesn't have a home yet. This is my other copy of Vibe by Liza James. I really like this edition because this is got like a shift to it. So it's not just like metallic, it's got like a blue shift. And the there's metallic pages. Sorry if you can't really see with the cellophane. There you go. You can see the metallic pages, which I arguably like better than sprayed edges personally. And then like the color kind of drips onto the spine here. I just think this is really, really cool. I haven't opened it up yet, so I can't tell you much about the interior formatting. What also came in this box is For the Love of Cain by Ames Mills. I have never read this one. I'm excited to get to it though. Honestly, this was one of those book boxes that even though I had only read Vibe, the rest of these I haven't read before. I was really interested in every single one of the books. Plus I felt like they just had really thought through and uh, did a wide variety of different people from the LGBT family spectrum tree. So we've got, kind of getting close kind of a collage style this is a metallic finish and then this is sprayed edges and it's like bullets but again the sprayed edges or the digitally printed edges are kind of like keeping consistent with the book itself what else we have this one is burning heaven by hayden hubbard so you can kind of see that one as well sprayed edges sorry these ones are going to be really tricky to see and then finally i have come out come out by alexian onyx and then once again we've got some digital edges again consistent I, I just liked the aesthetically how this whole box really like looked together as well <laughs> this is such a bad way to hold them let's try this one so you kind of got like the two that are like more like the pinky green colors together and then you've got these two kind of like darker ones but yeah I that was one of my more recent purchases but I have yet to open the cellophane and I'm too chicken to do it because I don't have shelf space for them right now so Okay, next up, mm, one of my prized possessions. Ooh, how do I pick this up? I'm, I'm just gonna have to be one at a time. The Kingmaker series, and this was put out by, I think this is Mystic as well. No, Bookish Box. I'm just making things up on the fly. I have them displayed with the character art side because I like how the spines look better, but this is like the, in the other side of it that most people have. Just a word of caution to anyone purchasing metallic book covers. This again is scraping up and I don't move these like ever so you can kind of see here and it's like wearing out like the colors kind of wearing off right here so that's why i have them flipped to the inside that color matches then these like end pages and the sprayed edges so this all is like the same okay hi so one quick thing that i wanted to point out that is now bugging me i never paid that much attention to the character art side now that i'm seeing it on film it's bugging me the backgrounds on the portraits don't match the rest of the color theming for the book and that's just really fucking weird to me okay that's all i had to say all right bye if you can kind of see that um and then i'll show you on the next one the naked books are just like beautiful i love this kind of like faux old looking books but all of them kind of look like that and then the reverse side has just like the character art i'm not super a big fan of this character art personally it's not my favorite i feel kind of mixed but i don't really see that like i'm only really ever looking at the spines um but one thing that i'll say that i was like a little bit disappointed about besides like the fact that the foil scratches off like really really easy well first i do like these hard box because they're like cushiony i've already said this they're beautiful but they're also like they feel pillowy so they feel really nice in your hands but one thing that i was a little bit disappointed about was that the bully and the rebel these are the two that sit next to each other in order they're the second and third book in the series the colors are like a little bit too close together um so when i had this metallic side out 
Ooh, I'm not treating these nicely right now. Don't those look almost the same? Like you can kind of see that this is a little bit more pinky and this is more of a true red. But like from a distance, it looks like I have two copies of the same book. There's pros and cons. I think they're really beautiful in a lot of ways. There are some things that I don't really love about them, especially for how expensive they were. But Kingmaker series is my all time favorite like mafia series. Although we'll see Sam Mariano's Morelli family may usurp them, which feels just absolutely blasphemous to say. I'm not a big collector of books. And I'm going to say this and it's going to sound like I am, but I own three different copies of this series because I love it so much and I couldn't decide. I have the men covers, which again, I'm a cheap bitch. So I got a lot of these for not full price. I got that entire series for like $30 from someone who did not know what they had. And one of the books is even signed. And then I have the original, what are those called? I have the original like alternate covers, like the non man covers. What is the word I'm looking for? Discreet? I think I have those. And then I have these guys. So I have a lot of different versions and I kind of want to get it on audio because I want to reread these soon. I'm out of control when it comes to these books. I really, 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 really love that series. Next up, these are all my books from Dark and Disturbed. So we'll start with Debt by Nina G. Jones. This I bought secondhand from someone. This was part of their Halloween box. After I read it, I was like, I require a physical copy of this book because it helped me out of a reading stuff that I had. I had back towards like the beginning of the year and it's got a snake on the cover. And if you don't know, I love snake imagery. I love everything about snakes. My phone cover is snakes. I have a snake tattooed on me. Like I just, I think they're gorgeous and misunderstood creatures. And it was on the cover this book and this was such a good like suspense thriller romance feel that mm, Nina G Jones can truly do no wrong she just she knows her characters she knows how they function psychologically I will say I think personally I probably overpaid just a hair for this one so would I necessarily grab it again at the price point that I purchased it for? No, but I have seen copies go for significantly cheaper than what I purchased it for. So in that regard, I would just because I really love this book. And I think it just it because it's kind of a classic black and red is really pretty. The interior is not like anything too crazy to write home about, but it's got like some formatting, not not terribly much, but it's mostly the, the nice cover. Also from, from Dark and Disturbed, I have the Losers Duet and the Dare, and I would save these books in a fire. I like the cover on the Losers Part 1, but the cover of Losers Part 2, the original cover, who are all those men? Because those aren't the men I'm picturing. It's not my favorite, but I love these covers. Jessica on the back of parts one and two here. This is looking hot as ever. And the front we have the boys and their cars with racing and we've got kind of like a shine on the title there and on some like race text. And then on the dare we kind of got the same thing but this is like the Halloween novella that kind of kicked it all off and Jessica's angel costume here and and all of that. One more random book. And I didn't even realize this was a special edition until someone pointed it out to me. And it's from, I think, a book box that no longer exists. Wanderlust Book Co. I have What We Broke by Marley Valentine. I found this special edition at my half price books. So for the price, I think, I don't think I even paid this. I think I had a coupon too. So I think I paid about $4 for this. So I would repurchase it because of that. But, um, yeah, it's not like a book box you can purchase from anymore. Um, I also haven't read this book. So that is something that I need to, to read. It is on my TBR. Okay, so finally, I have all of my Blackout Romance book box books, um, which is a bi-monthly subscription. So every other month, I am going to be canceling the subscription. I think I'll have had it for like a year by the time I'm planning to cancel, but they're going to not say for work covers that are cartoon looking. And I hate that. <laughs> I might be old and crusty. I just, I don't care about not safe for work character art. Every once in a while, there's one that I'm like, wow, so good. But for the most part, like when they send those postcards and book boxes, I'm like, I just couldn't give less of a, a fuck. <laughs> Like truly half the time they don't look how I expect them to look and those postcards get lost in my house or get thrown out constantly so like mm, I just don't care and I certainly don't want that type of design I also just in general although they pick books that I really really like I just don't think I'm a subscription box girly I don't think I'll go with another one I don't actually really enjoy collecting books that much like even just seeing all my special editions kind of spread out here kind of makes me feel like Ooh, I have the urge to sell some of them so like collecting in that way I just don't think is for me, which I think is okay. And it's a good learning lesson for me. But I will say all of their picks, I have either read them and love them. And I'm so happy to have a special edition or 
there are books that I'm really excited about and were like on my TBR anyway. I think there's only one I'm kind of like uh, about and I'll ask for y'all's opinion on. And then there's another one that I don't think I've ever heard of. But other than that, like otherwise it, they, they've pretty much nailed it. And these are all in their cellophane, so I apologize, but they're soft sides and I don't have a bookshelf to put these on. So they have to stay in there. But I have Black Wings and Stolen Things by Kaylee King. I'm imagining there's probably something to do with religion or religious deconstruction because we got two people boning in a church on here. Oh, Oh, and this title is raised. Ooh, that feels nice. So that's that one. No sprayed edges or anything, but um, I know that they have like not safe for work character art that's like in the book itself, which I think is better than having it as like a standalone card. So I do like that aspect. I had one that was out of its cellophane, but I'm realizing I don't have it here and I don't know where it went, but so I guess that's fine. So this is one that I haven't read, but I'm really excited to get to at some point. I, this cover is just really cool. She's really riding them. That's that one. Then we have Ride or Die, which is a bind up of Hitched and Along for the Ride by Lauren Beale. Um, I think that's like her hitchhiking series. <laughs> So I have read Hitched, but not Along for the Ride. So I do need to read that one. The This cover is like a little bit like, nah, it's like, it's okay. It's nothing special, but um, I, I love Lauren Beale. So I'm happy to have this in my possession. The next one I have is Heartless Heathens by Santana Knox, which like, how cool is this cover? Love that. This cover is, is really cool. I really like that one. So this is one that I haven't read. It's definitely one I want to get to. I'm just a little bit slower to get to it because I think this is a why choose and why choose I have to be in a really particular mood for. It's too much schlong for me to comprehend all at once or be interested in it all at once. I almost always have a favorite. So I really have to be like in the zone for that type of book. Um, next up is my other copy of The Blood We Crave. And I like this edition a lot more. I like all the color. I love this gal's makeup. And it, this is just way thicker. So I know for sure this has parts one and two in it. She is chunky. Um, and then we've got him on the backside here. I, I like this edition a lot more than the last chapter uh, book box one. Ooh. So the next one is one that I want to get y'all's thoughts on. So I have a copy of Double Edge by Nyla Kay. I'll be honest. This cover design, not my favorite, them flipping off. I know it's like part of the book, but I just, that's not really that cute to me. But I feel kind of conflicted about trying this book and reading this book because I've heard some not great things, but I don't know how much of that is just like the hate train of online versus like actual valid criticism. So if anyone's read this, let me know what you think. There's something about that just like gives me the ick because I think it kind of plays into a stereotype about queer people that they're like predators or will like fuck anybody. Is that a valid like reason to be concerned about this? I don't know. Let me know y'all's thoughts because I've I've thought on and off about selling this edition to be honest. Let me know what you guys think. All right next up I have Fragmented Illusion and this is by Marie Anne. This is another cover I'm like not super in love with. The mask just looks like it's kind of sitting on his face a little goofy personally but um I do love Marie Anne and I guess she's not gonna be writing anymore for the foreseeable future so I'm so sad because she's like not doing well mentally and I was just kind of like ugh broke my heart that she wasn't doing well. She writes great stuff, but um, yeah, happy to have this because I I do love Marie Anne stuff and it's nice to have special editions of people you like, but haven't read this one. And then for some reason, these two are bound together. Um, so I can't really show you the copy of Rich Boy by Ruby Wolf. This is the only book that they've sent where I've been like, um, what? <laughs> I, I've never heard of this, um, but the real winner here is Untouchable by Sam Mariano. And now that I'm on a Sam Mariano kick, I am more excited than ever to read this book. I am stoked about having a copy of this. But yeah, for some reason they bound these two together, but like with none of the others, they did that. So I don't, I don't know why. Also, if you've read Rich Boy by Ruby Wolf, let me know if you liked it, didn't like it, what are your thoughts? But that's it folks. I have finally showed you all of my special editions and I've talked some shit about some books that I would not repurchase. I would love to hear your thoughts on special editions. Do you like collecting them? Do you not like collecting them? Are there any in your collection that you're like, ugh, regret? Are there any book boxes that you really turn to that really like turn out quality ones? I'd love to chit chat about all things special edition in the comments. With all of that, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you found this interesting. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more content from me and I really, really hope I see you on my next video. Bye-bye.